Okay. So, LLV, sorry, large language model news. Um, Chat GPT strawberry slash Q star, or whatever you want to call it, just dropped last week. And that is basically what my talk was going to be on, was how to do this by yourself before it came out. But then it came out. And so I played along with it for a while, and I got to the point of uh, it's better just to show than to. And so I'm going to MacGyver this talk from scratch. I don't even have a Linux environment. We're going to have to MacGyver that first. Uh, so the first thing is all I have here is a GitHub account. So we need to create a uh, GitHub worker file. What is this? Dot GitHub slash work flows. Let's see a section. See this or do I need to increase my phone? I can, but I'm right here. Well, let's go around. Let me see. Bigger. Bigger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Works for me. <laughs> okay. Nice glasses on a MacBook in Z shell. Left that. Uh, so I'll make the GitHub directory, make the workflows directory. Excellent. Workflows. No, I, mean, I didn't go into the directory first. Yeah, you can tell I'm, I'm brain fogged today, so, so please yell at me if I'm doing something stupid more than usual. Make a directory called workflows. Since this, this is a talk on everything from RTFM to LLM and where you should be on the spectrum, uh, this is you know BSD Linux, basically Max, you know Linux. It's got your man pages. You can you know, go to commands just like Linux, except they're BSD Unix. So occasionally have slightly weird options, like said might behave slightly differently and things like that. Yeah, the, the most annoying one is, uh, sorry, is time. doesn't have a dash B option. I think it's dash L for, yeah, that dash L is giving me all of the system counters. Or it's dash B on Linux. If I remember right, there's some objects around uh, tar. Yes. Yes, TAR is also so Yeah, TAR probably, I think, has some weird stuff. Like, everything's weird. Yeah, it's because it makes the file. And... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're a BSD Linux environment. I'm sorry, BSD Unix. It's, it's close. It's positive. Um, There. We'll make a directory called workflows. And then just like Linux, you have a touch. What is it? Dot, I guess, ci.yaml. I think you can call this anything you want. This has to be YAML, YAML file. And in here, I want to have it to, and I think there's a, this is this is the demo off the GitHub page. I'm just gonna copy this thing. And delete out everything that we don't want. Uh, do I even need this? Uh, so this is giving, oh, so, so everything here in the curly brace syntax, this, these are uh, variables that GitHub passes in when it spins up a GitHub worker. And since I don't have Linux locally, we're going to use a, a GitHub Linux Ubuntu. 
for, for the file that we're building. So that's why I'm doing this, because I don't have Docker on this box. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's going to check out the code, and it's going to just run Echo. So get status to status. And I want to add GitHub workflows CIM. And push that GitHub. Super strong password. Still up your space entry lock. Yeah, that's what I'm getting is sentry lock. And that should have uploaded. Did I do wrong? Did you not, did not commit? I thing. didn't do a git commit. Yeah. I'm brain fogged today. Git commit, uh, and then give it a message. Workflow. There we go. Now it'll upload, I think. Failed to push some reps. Remote rejected, but these things about personal access. What the hell? <clears throat> okay. Refusing to allow personal access token or to create update. That's uh, actually kind of impressive, though. I mean, that's kind of hard to just say what? That's actually kind of impressive. Because that means you can give tokens out. To like push to your repo and you can update other things in repo, but not your CI. That is I interesting. So I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna even be more janky. Uh and what is it? So I got this. I logged in. Yep. That's a little plus button next to code. Great new file. <laughs> do it in the console. Uh And what's that? This thing. Yolo. It should have downloaded it. No, because you, you've now you now have a, you've now done things. You're now in the state. Yeah, you have two different. Yeah, you two sites look different. Yeah, you you've got you're playing Git hard. No, so this has, so, so the main branch has the image file. Right. But the problem is you committed it locally and you committed it on the server, and so now you've got two the same things. And you have to merge. Yep. Yeah. Oh, but you need to run the command. Uh, get pull dash to the dash dash. Just force? No. Or merge. Oh, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just want to blow away my. Exit the window. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it always to get oh, really? no, I've that before. Well, you've already committed. You've got, you've already committed, so you have to, you have to yeah. have conflicting commits. So, you have to get, so what, you should, what you could have done is done a git reset head till one, pop that off, then stash that, then pull it, then you would have fine. So git reset head to the one. But just do, don't do it now because you've already merged, so just keep moving. This is why git drives me all crash. Just keep going forward now. You, 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 you fix this and keep going. Anyway. You could just keep your search search code on paper. <laughs> but now you have, to, what, what, you have to go to that admin console and tell it. You now have to go to the admin console and tell it that you're allowed to use a runner in, in this workspace. If I recall, it doesn't just automatically do it. 
actions, runners. There are no runners configured. Do self-hosted. Wait, no. You want to get that posted? You want to go to Gen Mod, probably. You said what? Go to Gen Mod, pretty sure. Yeah, it's Gen Mod. Allow actions. Yep. Saves. Set up a workflow yourself. What is this? Okay, all I want to do is say, "Hey, actually run the thing." Oh, you didn't. You didn't put it in dot in the dot GitHub folder. I just just I did. I'm looking at your repo right now. Which is there's a folder called workflows. Ah. Actually, now you should just push. Actually, except that won't let me. Oh, right. Won't let you do that. Yeah, you have to copy it. Oh, never mind. This is where I do checkout. <laughs> uh, don't use get kids. <laughs> use SBN. Well, oh, GitLab is where it's at. What? <laughs> GitLab is where it's at. Yes. Or, I mean, if you really want to hurt yourself, uh, was it central version for CVS? Oh. <laughs> Did I spell this right? Dot GitHub slash workers slash CI.net. I think so. It yeah, it should be. Oh, yeah. Oh, Okay, so now if I do this, check it out. That. Boom. That get. Is it clone? My idiot. You're going to clone it, yeah. What? You're going to clone it, yeah. Checkouts removing like the branches and tabs and other fun things like that. There, I got it. I now I can see. Okay, so now if I hit actions, it actually sees it. Okay. And did it run? It ran and then we go. Yep, that's the green check mark. It ran. Yep. So now if I go to, where's the output file? Click on that. Click on like the explorer to get the. Nope, that one. You want, yeah, you wanted to click on the, the there. Yep, yep. There we go. So now it can echo stuff. Yay. Echo. And I'm in sync. Cool. So I've got Cloud from Anthropic, Cloud 3.5. I've got ChatGPT with the new strawberry. I've got actual Linux kernel documentation. I don't know which this is. I better well, first let's see what environment this is running in because I don't know. So you want to send the latest things. Let's see here. Job name, users, actions, checkout name. Where's it actually doing something on the show? There it is, Ron. There's a oh, sorry, this is this is a prospect I had open for the project I'm actually in. <sighs> so so it has a run echo here. Yep. I'm edit that. Do what? Uh, Run. Yes, there's Rex. 
No, sorry, I'm just a uh, union dash A. Let's take it, Colonel. Do you need a space? And also do a um that was it Etsy slash OS release. We'll leave that to the vendor agnostic one. I think that's it. It should run automatically because I think I have it whenever it doesn't push. Yep. On push. There we go. It's running. In progress. Good. See that goes on. Four seconds. So this is a 6.8 kernel. Uh, Ubuntu, and the OS release is Ubuntu 22.04. So, what kernel documentation for 6.8? Ah, go away. I don't know how to get, you just, maybe hidden the HTML has like a pull down menu? And does it really matter which RC I go for, or should I just go for the root? Just like go for the root because the root. because the way that Ubuntu does it is that they they got the source for 6.0 and now they've just been backpatching it for apparently over a thousand times. So, All right. yes. so we have a working Linux box. Uh, we have uh, actually let me see what compiled chains on it too because I don't even know. I think the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, Klein's on there, I think GCC's on there. I, I still have versions though. Not that it matters, but anyway, they, they, they should have a recent version of Klein, a recent version of GCC. It should have most of your system libraries. If not, you can use an app package to get it. Um, and I got all that, and I also got the trustee. I did, I should have brought um, Linux Programming Interface Book. Which you can usually get at half price books for super cheap. Ooh. And I recommend getting a copy. <clears throat> um, so the question is, what do we want to do for the rest of the talk here? I, the, the, the thing that I was doing was just programming versions of, of the word count program, because mm -hmm. you hit a lot of the the things in the Linux environment. You hit the C tool chain, you get to try to see some system calls, everything. But but I, I'm open to it. Because we have the power of chat GPT and Claude and <laughs> I mean that's a good starting point. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a very simple word count program. So word count program, WC. Yeah, WC test that I Uh it gives you the uh what is it? I'm now forgetting. It's like the characters, the line numbers, and the link to line number, <clears throat> word line, and character, and byte code. Although I think for bytes, you have to ask it for that. And it's also weird because things used to all be ASCII, and now you also get Unicode depending on your environment. Well, let's just do ASCII. Um, I'm cheating. STD bull. What's STD bull? Um, Julian. Anyway, so uh, so we go pop the mapings. Well, let's look at the code that he gave out here. So it's got a, a long. Uh, to store your lines, words, and characters. Oh, just so it, it gives you a Boolean type, which yeah. most people just use like a character to char. Uh, so it does a, a get char from standard input, because you're not hitting anything. And while it doesn't see the end of file character, loops through, it adds uh, a character to chars. Uh, if the character that it just got out is equal to the new line character, it Increases lines by one. Uh, 
if it's a space character, and I think that actually uses the environment file of what is a space in your environment, which yeah. is dependent on your show, which gets really gnarly. If we, I, I, I don't think we should get into that. Um, so it's false. If it isn't a, a space character, it counts as it's part of the word. And like, hey, you're the new part of the word that increases that. And I don't think this is going to work. Oh no, it does. It, it has a state. It, it's a it's a it's a finite state automata which has two states. Either I'm in the middle of a word, or I'm in the middle of spaces. So that way it knows where where there's a start of a new word, which is which is all you need. It is that is that one uh, that one state variable? So this, this looks like it should work. Let's, uh, let's see what chat GPT does. What was my prompt here? I'm going to give it the same thing. And this is the new uh, chat GPT strawberry with Q star. And what you're going to see is there's going to be, I, I think it uses what's called the tree of thought type of thing, where like it does kind of like a search tree and then it has something that ranks like, hey, is this a good answer or is it crap? Which it does out of bounds somehow with the black box of which we don't still don't know. <laughs> and with the 01 preview, it does not have the code interpreter, so you cannot run code in it. You have to go back to your other chat GPT environment or run it out of band. So you could run it in Gobbook easily. It, it would interpret it within the LLM. It wouldn't actually fire up a Linux VM like code interpreter does. Yeah, you, you could open up the, the web page gobbook.org and run it there. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which also gets into JS Linux if you really are. Yeah. Hey, anyway. <laughs> Out of scope. Right. Right now, it doesn't have an actual virtual machine that you can run. So, uh, uh, crafting WC functionality, creating the program, examining the code, counting the file components. Tracking word bounties, boundaries, refining word boundaries. Yeah, it has a bunch of nanny steps in there where it like, is this safe? I don't know if this is safe. Uh, um, and it looks like it's giving pretty much the same program, except it has a, its pain here is a little bit more fancy. Uh, yeah, it's just calling into a second function here. It's also doing some extra error checking to see that you're uh no, oh, this one will actually take in a file name. I think the other one had to take everything into standard input. Because this one actually opens a file, it looks like. But it looks like it's using pretty much the same algorithm where either you're inside of Word or you're not inside of Word. Just reads it until it gets to the end of the line. And yeah, it's basically the same program. But what you'll notice that it did that tree of thought there beforehand, where it, it thought about it a little bit. And I'm going to go back to the, what was it, the chat GPT O. Oh, I don't like that. It's like it's giving it to me in the same context. Yeah, yeah. The thing with this, the, the uh, ChatGPT, um, the strawberry two star, is it's super helpful, and then it likes to give you like a lot of step by step instructions, which is good in some cases. But if you try to ask it to do something stupid and simple, it has the problem that it's too helpful, <laughs> and, that, and that's why when Terry Tao, the mathematician, yesterday, like three days ago, was talking about how this O1 preview is kind of like a competent grad student. It, but it frustrated him. That, that's why it was because he was giving it like mathematical theorem stuff and it was giving him too much stuff. And he was actually asking for a very simple, like, I want you to do the thing, not anticipate how I want you to do the thing. <laughs> and and that, that's where this gets really annoying. And also, it's, uh, you know, super safe, and it's not going to, you know, have adult content or anything that's, except they also nerfed it so that 
like, oh my gosh, I don't want you outputting viruses or something out of this. And so it gets into a weird, yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of that, but um, anyway, but I, I switched the model back to the, uh, so this should be what it was like before the Q-star, where it's just sitting the large language model straight, which is similar to what Claude was doing Except it's using the previous context inside here, so it's able to cheat. So I don't know if this is really a good <laughs> comparison. <laughs> yeah, I have no clue what the system prompt is for this, but that's. I'm trying to think of a where a good because even things like STDN, this it's what uh, slash dev slash zero in a Linux system. Yeah, it, 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 yeah there's it, actually there's an actual file yeah. name for standard in. What is it has to be violated? Dev Z R O. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It was what? Not to be confused with Z E R O, which is just all zeros. Yeah, so it's it's slash dev, which is simply to cell fifty zero or yeah, number three. It's all zero. Yeah. Sorry, proc cell fd zero. Proc, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. The magic file system. Although apparently you can also use, yeah, dev STDN. According to the internet. So let me go back there so I compile that. Because the web browser is totally the best IDE. <laughs> I mean, that's basically as code as. I want to disagree, but I can't. Both <laughs> <laughs> of these statements. <laughs> There's a reason it takes 12 seconds to move up on a good day. Yep. And turning a whole fat Chrome instance in the background. Zed decided they wanted to compete with it, apparently, with AI. You know, well, Zed's been written in Rust. There. That was their whole thing of being able to work faster. Until we added AI. Yes. <laughs> that should work, shouldn't it? I'm compiling the thing, I'm calling it wc.out. And then it's writing the program I just compiled on its own source. Yeah. Which should give us some lines, numbers, and yeah, it sure. It looks like it'll work. Actions. Oh, it died. Killed it. Dead. No such error. Or it doesn't see wc.c. So it doesn't know where its own source directory is. So where do you Oh, you have to. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to do an ls to start out with. You no, know, you're that directory are we in? You have to do a. Uh, you have to do. Action slash checkout. Um, you have to actually check out your source code. Oh, that's by not just, you know. <laughs> I thought I had it already uploaded. Uh, I don't believe so. I believe as a. Um, oh, yeah, so you have to do it after the checkout. That's yes. Right. I can just move it down. Isn't, but also, that way you can control when you check out, which can be 
useful in certain circumstances? Well, yeah, because sometimes you don't want to check it out. You just want to use it as a, like if you're remoting into another box, you know, you don't necessarily have, to have any source code to deal with. Like, like if this is running like a, a headless browser test. Yeah. Give me a minute, I need to check it out. <clears throat> Neat. I think this is after the checkout. That, that should be the checkout, I think. Yep, that should be the checkout right there. And just to make sure, so I don't have to run this again. I'm going to do a PWD just to know what directory are. Good. Actions. Thank you. Q. In progress. <laughs> Okay, we are in directory runner work Chad GPT Chad GPT. Uh, we ran GCC and it didn't barf. That's wrong. But then this is the one that we copied. What was the one we I think the one we copied in Tosh had actually asked for standard input. Mm -hmm. Is what we, we didn't give it the we gave it the Claude version. We didn't give it the, the Chat GPT Strawberry version. Yeah, this is the one that's expecting the uh, the output from standard in. It does it doesn't do an F open like the other one does. So we got to go back and put it. cat it in. You know, cat it, cat it. Uh, da, 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 where's my? Oh, I just have brain fog all day today. I need a dot C. Your cat, cat needs what? Uh, cat line twenty four needs to be cat wc dot c. Oh, you're right. Otherwise, that expand of the binary path uh, of like the system directory. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would run literal command wc. That would, would cat, yeah, would probably cat the wc binary. Yeah, no, binary. no, it would just hang. Okay. Yes, because oh, oh, cat wc. Uh, yeah. What is cat? It'll attempt to cat the binary. Yeah, you'll get pure from yeah, your gibberish. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. should, I don't know if it would result in system path in the That would be a shock. Actually, I just did it with some Mac OS. It did WC natural file directory. It just oh. went. It just went. Mm. Anyway, that, well, that's, that's it, Andrew cut the. Yeah, that's expected. Yeah, that's expected. <laughs> that should work. <clears throat> Do it again in your video directory. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's effectively what you'd be emulating, right? Test driven development. What? Quick, plug the refund before he breaks it. <laughs> and user bin. It actually works. I do like that you have the first search result in my Google for Chat GPT. Uh, although, if you're going to be like super test. Or TDD, we'd also do like the, the system just as like a, a gold standard to see if it's close, but it looks like it's close. Okay, so we have a compiler that works. We have code that's running. What fun Linux thing do we want to play with? Probably involving file streams because we probably all want to go out of here and I want to get this done in 10 minutes. <laughs> so the interesting thing I just did, uh, we're using several of the uh, uh, standard libraries. Yeah, I, I just prompted, uh, I, I was playing around with a Git or a, a, a rep implementation, and I said, okay, now do it without uh, the uh, standard I.O. library and stuff like that. Oh, so you want to do it for a system call? Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we do that. 
Um, I, I mean, that I, I just did it. Uh, now, of course, I'm doing it in a U.Town versus a slot, but it's the same thing. Uh, so the only thing, the only I.O. it's using here is get char. So I, I dropped out. I, I Did asked, you think of S trace? Yeah. I think the box is S. Let me run this under S trace and it'll actually show us the system called it's using. Yeah. So what I did was prompted it to remove, uh, to not use any of the include files. So if you scroll back up, yeah, uh, all of those uh, like STDIO, C type, standard rule. I, I just said, okay, don't use any of those and write it without them. <laughs> and it just does low level raw C E thing. I think we can do it with that STDIO. I don't want to deal with the other two files. Yeah. And, and for STDIO, the only thing we need is get char, I think. We just have to write our own get char. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> I mean, running a, running a robust get char, that's a bit of a harder problem. Yeah, a, a simple one, easy. Well, the problem is it has to set up buffers, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. but, but, but can't you just do the straight uh, Linux read command? Yeah, you could just, yeah. Yeah, you could just do read. Yeah. Read from the read from dev sit in. I think, do we need the inline assembly? I think we could do this in C. I don't think it needs assembly to do that. No, it literally is just the read system call. All should be. <sighs> so yeah, it's having to deal with the buffer, the yep. root buffer. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just using Linux read command, which I'm assuming it gets from uni std, I'm assuming. Probably. I, I, I mean, it seems like it's a Unix std yeah. read, which is like a POSIX thing, mm -hmm. which takes in a uh, standard in file number. Which seems to be some constant, which I have no clue what that is. Uh, be zero. Yeah, zero. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, standard in. Uh, uh, it's passing in the buffer. It's passing in the buffer size. If it gets something that isn't zero, wait, read bytes equals, okay, until it hits yeah, zero. It loops until it gets an Yeah, it gets, until it gets no bytes back. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, size T is this. The word of the, the box, it reads it. It, it reads in each buffer. thing from the buffer. Okay, so yeah, it throw, it's already thrown in the buffer. So read throws it to the buffer, and then it reads from the internal buffer instead of from the operating system. Yes. Uh, it figures out if it's a space, which again is platform shell <laughs> specific. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's doing everything it was before, just now it's it a little bit more low level. Yeah. And I'm trying to think if there's anything. So with the Linux read command, can you tell it, I want to read like a certain number of bytes? Yeah. So if you open yeah. the size. Oh, yeah, the buffer size down. is telling the, the maximum buffer size, basically. Yeah. It says like reading up to this many bytes. So and then obviously you don't have as many that will give you just as much as it has. So if we go back here and you read. I have no clue where this is at. Uh, uh, what would it even be in the kernel? Wouldn't it be in G? Well, this is, this is a read is a kernel call. This is the read kernel call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like one of the most fundamental kernel calls. <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it lives in unistd.h, uh, file descriptor, a pointer to the buffer, 
and then count. Which is the max number of bytes. Yeah, it leads up to yeah. count bytes. So yeah, this is this is the POSIX read function, which yes. Linux implements. Um, if count is greater than size max, the result is unspecified. And I'm assuming that's a system. Is, is that a curl variable or is that a point of POSIX? Well, dot one, if count is greater than size max, the resulting the result is inflation defined. See notes for the upper limit on one. That is according to, like, that is by definition undefined behavior. So size max is like a. It's like a global constant. It's like I'm feeding it 64 bits and it only takes 32 bits or screwed. Yeah, or somewhere, wherever, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. But, but okay. Then that's where they call it self parse, not necessarily the operating system. Okay. Yep. Um, I mean, I think it's something very bad. Really. And then it has flags. Uh, so if zero non block is given the open, it returns immediately with E again error code where no data is available. So then there's the select or pull can always. Okay, so there's also like a, oh, what do they call it? A future, basically. That you can you can pull this thing over and over again until just because it might not have the data right away because you might have to go out to disk and get the data and then then it'll have the data like in a, in a couple of, you know milliseconds and then it'll fill in the buffer so it might so that makes sense or it might, or if you have a drive mounted over the network somehow you know it might it, it might take a while you can do this over carrier pigeons. <laughs> uh, but you have to pull the thing. Right? The error correction is very nasty. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the, the size uh, max uh, variable uh, at most in Linux can return 2.14 gigs at a time uh, per call. Oh, so if you say give me four gigs of data, <laughs> it might you you're, you're, is you're, that you're that in other in the kernel, or is that a kernel config? Uh, it. On um, Linux read and similar system calls will transfer at most uh, X number of bytes, returning the number of bytes actually transferred. Uh, so, so basically that, that's the max. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like it's a, a implementation level thing. It's in a header file. Yeah. What? It's in a header file. There's a header yeah. file instead of but I'm assuming there's probably some assumptions built other places on that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if other stuff blew up in your face if you tried to uh, make that bigger. Because there's like the, like the memory page size. That, that's, that's a pretty constant buffer thing. Yeah. And at the low level, there's, you know, with your, with your chip, what's the cache line? You know, when it, when it pulls something from memory, it doesn't just pull one byte, it pulls page, a chunk. Yeah. A chunk. But this is true for 32-bit and 64-bit systems. Sure. So it's not not 64-bit uh, dependent. I mean, two gigs is like it's like right in the middle of the line, of the line between you know, 64 and 32. Yeah. Yeah. Because anyways. Amazon's S3, I want to say it has like a five gigabyte limit, something close to that. That anything over that, you have to do the full one, basically. Which I ran into and it's a pain, and I had to fix their documentation. <laughs> but that's fun doing pull requests. They, oh, by the way, your documentation's wrong. Here's the new. No, it's always fun grabbing vendors' docs. Yeah. Well, at least Amazon has their docs open, and I can actually send them a pull request of like your docs are barred. This is how you do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're doing, if you're using Amazon S3 and it's over like four gigs, you basically have to set up, hey, I'm about ready to do a few big file transfer. Give me like a, a handle basically, and then do it. You can't just say eat 10, 10 gigs. Mm -hmm. You have to say eat, eat four gigs, eat four gigs, eat 2.5 gigs. This, this, sounds like a, this sounds like the file system where you have to chunk your files into four gig chunks. Yeah. So, okay, so, so it's two oh, gigs ish with Linux IO. Yep. And Amazon is like four to six on its. Block story. Okay. Um, the driver discarding the newest frame. Okay. The read time is discarded. Applications can get the number of buffers used internally by the driver. Drivers. 
Brevin, this is a kernel call, so all sorts of fun things happen to read. With the Vidoc G param and the Vidoc S param IO controls. They are optional, however, discarding policy. Yeah, so, so Linux is basically just the turtle of driver, or sorry, turtle of buffers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's buffers on top of buffers on top of buffers. Yeah, that's, a, that's basically the kernel on C in a nutshell. Yeah. What's a Vidoc G? I, I, this is stuff that I haven't seen for years. That Vidoc G param. Applications with different frame interval. I have a device we've reconfigured with frame interval. So what is a frame? It's like a, a certain file range? It's saying talking about video streams. I think this is actually like a frame of video that we're just talking. There's some funky Well, because with video you usually have like a like a like a buffer for the screen. And back when I used to do graphics programming, you usually have double buffers where like, this is the one that's being rastered right now, and this is the one mm -hmm. that I'm about ready to finish. And once it gets done, I just swap the buffers and it. But the thing to remember in the uh, Unix paradigm of thinking, everything is a file. Right. Yeah. So if you're reading off of some device, and it's a file. It's a file, and like if you're intentionally chunking it, to, chunking it to be like a video frame. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is this is this is this is for video stuff, where like you actually have a video stream of video buffers coming at you, mm -hmm. and it's asking how, how many like frames do you frames want, do you want to capture in your stream here. And what was the other one? Uh, Vidoc. Oh, so these are both video buffers. So, initiating the DMA over user memory when read is, oh, so we can also do a direct memory access where the video um, goes direct over the network into your, your video buffer, which seems really unsafe, but it, <laughs> I mean, I guess it was just reading pixels, why does it care? Yeah, I mean, like, but, but you know, DMA is all sorts of high performance activities, like, you know, especially like in like high stability battle systems, like if you're running like a virtualization cluster, yeah. our DMA is actually really useful. Yeah, with the MPI programming, they use mm -hmm. yeah. And so, EGE e again is non blocking IO. Add a bit. That's, that's the air code. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven. So they basically have bits. And each one of these is set zero or one. I'm assuming. Yeah, that, that, I mean that's how most things in Unix give you. Yeah, so, 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 it's, so, it's, so it's got eight different bits in a byte, and that's how you set your flags. Yeah, it's a bit mask. Yeah, all it is. References an inaccessible memory area. Oh, so that's a that's a fault flag. Yeah, all well, these are fault flags, like like that second one. Oh, this is the return value. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so like that second one. That means like value. okay, so that's why there's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if it sees the first bit, then it knows that it, there's an error, and then it sets. So, so it's like, do I have an error? And then the rest of the bits are um, the flags, the error flags, because you, you might be able to have two of these at once, probably. Or is this an EU? I don't know. Might even be some system independent. Oh, you're reading, it looks like you're reading a very specific read call. You're doing a V4 LD2 read. Oh, not, not the actual read. Oh, read that isn't the Linux read. What's the. Uh... You're in the Linux media infrastructure. Is that like a drop down? Either right. Kernel, where's kernel calls? This is, this is bad. This is about as much as I look at Linux documentation lately. Uh, read two is in the man page. Uh, one second here. I can post it into uh, the uh, Slack channel. Well, I'm, in, I'm down a rabbit hole here because I'm in the middle of the Linux. There we go. Working with development community, development tools and processes, user or so user oriented documentation. 
Linux kernel user space API guide. So the, what were you saying user space API? Three. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then we have Open Cappy, BBPF, IOC TLS. This is what you use the read commandment. If you just do a search uh, for uh, read uh, to uh, man page, it, it should get you what uh, you need. Just in like Google or something. Well, that's what I did earlier. It, it sent me down. I'm just trying to see like a list of like the kernel commands. The, the Linux kernel. I mean, I would search for the that, that unistid that h file. Probably would, what? That unistid. That you, oh, that the was, SDID. Yeah, I was for that. Yeah. That's less than helpful. That's used everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, because it is the most low level. <laughs> so all the so all you know all the fun things. User interface for read or let's have a look at memmap, because that's a very specific call. This back image. Slow reader. My math was also used pretty much everywhere. Why don't you just I I I to? It. Okay. In the driver and user space, let me explain where. What are the Let's go back to set to the strawberry. There are the Linux system. Oh, I think we need. Oh, here we go. According to Claude, read, write. There's a read is zero. That's a good one to remember. So if you can remember read, write, open and close, what do you? Zero, one, two, three, you can do pretty much everything, basically. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, that's starting to sound like some of those esoteric programming languages. I mean, yeah, if you're making those three this calls, it's going to be a, lot, a while. But you can get almost anything that those four system calls. Well, yeah, you have to remember up to seven to be able to pull something, so. And also, L default sim length is being LSAT. So for actually writing, you only need 0, 1, 2, 3. Sim lengths are overrated. I mean, some people just need 0 and 1. <laughs> and we liked it that way. Yeah. Well, yeah, we just back and <laughs> close our file. Leave let the system do it. You have to open the file descriptor before you can use it. Yeah, so you yeah, unless you're yeah, using one that's already open. Mm -hmm. So you kind of do need 2 and 3. Or at least you need two. You need two. You don't need three, really. <laughs> Who closes files? I mean, I mean, the program ends. The operating system will just clean up after me anyway. Yeah, so yeah. three. <laughs> you just need to know zero, one, two, and that's all you need to do to program Linux. <laughs> this sounds like an interesting, uh, 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 like code camp talk. All you need to know is how to count to two and you can uh, program. But you need to count to three. Yeah. Well, actually, except zero. Zero. All you need is count to two. Yeah, you need to be able to count to two. It's three numbers you need. Nude. I spy. <laughs> Nude. I spy. <laughs> It actually, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this chat with you, Strawberry, I mean, it's very helpful. Like, like just asking that simple question, they have a pretty good, 
like man page basically just have an LLM plus using chain of thought to kind of decide what was good and bad. Um, I don't even know what AUS is call is. List all systems calls? Is that a thing? In BSD also? It says if you have audit installed. Did you have AU, AUS, AUSYS call? At least on my throwbox and I'm. What? My throwbox and I do. Not by, not installed by default on the high level to check to see if it's under So I'm on batch mode Linux here. Not by default on Debian 12. I don't think that it's installed by default on Debian. Think so. I'm going to update my punch card. <laughs> right, can you think about that? Like back in the like, 60s where you had to like write this out in a punch card, submit it. <laughs> Make sure like when, you, when you're taking your system, when you're taking your punch card stack over, you don't need to drop it. No, no, no that's easy. Uh, you take a sharpie. Oh, yeah, you just want to side move sideways. And you oh, yeah, then you have a nice like, little line. Yeah. yeah. Here's one of the hats. <laughs> Wrong uh, side uh, story. I had an instructor who swears that the reason he left and didn't pull his hair out, but, you know, virtual pull his hair out, he left ISU was because he had a, a final of some type project program and he was walking across <laughs> a quad or from one somewhere, from ISU one area or another, and wind kicked up mm. and yeah, all, all he had this card stack. It's like, really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they were still using cards. That was the storage in the 80s and, and uh, early yeah. 80s, very early. Like, what? Yeah, I'm not complaints about punch cards and the same kind of stuff. <laughs> Granted, when we were in school, we were still, some people were still using magnetic media. And I remember one senior girl comes in crying to the computer lab, like, I can't get my turn. She goes to a magnet. Wow. No, yeah, is that the drink? Really like floppy disk. Because that thing was amazing. Yeah. The, the green floppy screens they had in the library. Just oh yeah. Uh, the, the, the drink box was amazing. Yeah, like, I, like, I, I wish they would not have decommissioned it. Uh, Ooh, uh, you know. Yeah, I um, I learned how to aim on it. I assume because of that. Well, so I, like I, I learned just, how you know up to here, and that was it, and that was the one. I learned how to type on a uh, Apple IIe. Now, of course, they were ancient by the time I was using them, but I mean, a uh, keyboard, a keyboard. <laughs> but except for these, I mean, were uh, the very definition of repetitive stress injuries. <laughs> <laughs> they were mechanical. They were good. Unless you could play Oregon Trail on them. <laughs> you have died of dysentery. <laughs> Way too often. Uh, yeah, that command doesn't exist. Oh, I remember those numbers are for x86 this call. I because I have an ARM VM in the zero the zero this call is IO setup, not read oh. on ARM. Oops. <laughs> like it's a very different list of this calls. <laughs> <laughs> Before people do wander off here, since I, I know we are starting to butt up against uh, uh, a uh, later hour, and I'm sure people online, uh, John, at some point is going to fall asleep, I'm sure. I hope. Oh, it's like, almost. I, <laughs> yes, I, I hear you're still awake there. Uh, but for next month, I know there someone had asked for uh, how to do uh, static web hosting and how, how to like generate a blog from text files and that sort of uh, world. So I'll be tackling that. It's been a couple of years since I've shown off my uh, oh 
you can even what, what I'm using for it. Now, if you have a dog, Jekyll. Jekyll. Yes, it's been, been a while since I've shown off my Jekyll promise. But uh, eat that in some real simple, either Apache or whatever you want to host it on. And, uh, or, I mean, if, if you truly don't care, you can chuck it on to even GitHub or uh, one of those places and host it out of there for free, as long as you're not doing anything too illegal, too obnoxious, or too commercial. Because any of those could get you booted. So I wouldn't go take your stuff, post about how you're going to present at DEF CON, and then uh, <laughs> challenge people to try and hack into your uh, your uh, website. Uh, that, that probably will get you dropped a band hammer. But I mean, I'll sell it. It'll be fine. Just a file server. Go file server. What do they do? Fuzz the file server? It is Black Hat. I, I wouldn't put it past <laughs> Black Hat. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, imagine saying that you being able to say that you hacked GitHub. That's what Home uh, Live is for. That, that would get you some street cred. Stick right code there. does that for a living. Yeah, yes. some, some, but not. I think, I think, he, I don't know if he's done it late. So they fixed a lot of stuff before. Uh, yes, and we'll, we'll trim that part out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's probably yeah. He's presented well, at DEF Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, but uh, so anyway, though. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, thanks, Chad. Uh, not, not that I, I'm trying to end this, but uh, I, I probably will stop uh, recording just because we're, we're hitting diminishing returns. Sure, it's right. nine. And plus, uh, the odds of any. We can count to three. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, though, uh, so yeah, we'll hit.